but every believer should be educated uh, on on the strong man or concerning the strong man. And really, the sooner the better. Because the enemy has a way of, when one comes to Christ, the enemy has a way of uh, beating you up. <laughs> Not even with new problems. But beating you up with problems that's been there the whole time when you was in darkness. But making you feel like you made a horrible move by uh, giving your life over to the master. He, he make you feel like you're missing something because you, now you saved. And so the enemy has a way of doing that. And some people get sucker punched into believing that. They get sucker punched into believing it. So now, so for one to be able to recognize game, as the youth would say, when it comes to Satan, would spare you a whole lot of headaches. When you can recognize Satan's game and how he has been trying to muscle you around or how he's been muscling you around because he's been that trying to be that strong man in your life. So when you recognize that game, then it puts you in a better position, a better position. Uh, stance, if you will, of being able to fight off uh, what the enemy is trying to do in your life. So now, in time past, he, meaning Satan, the devil, that is, has even been successful in turning believers against God. Now, that's a, that's a sad indictment. If you, when you think about that, you save, sanctify, one Sunday you're singing in the choir, the next Sunday, you at home mad at God. It, it, and you probably say, if that don't pass, I don't think that happened. It happens all the time. People get mad at God. They get mad at God because they say, well, God haven't provided me a, a, a job. Well, you haven't put in no application. You, can, you know, God, uh, God, God haven't sent me my husband. Well, you won't comb your hair. You know, just... People just be mad at God for reasons that don't make no sense. So, as a child of God, the first thing we must understand is the fact that uh, our God or our Heavenly Father is good. Now, I know we say God is good, and you know, back in the day, all the time, and all the time, God is good. But until you really embrace not the ideal but the fact that God is good it will have a totally different meaning when you really embrace when you look back uh, over your life and you think about how things could have shifted taken a different course taking a different route so on and so forth you could have ended up in a different situation could have even ended up dead could have ended up even uh, uh strung out or whatever and so on and so forth or being with the wrong person then you will realize that God is truly good this is just not something that I want to say but this is something that I want to embrace and know and be able to say it without hesitation that God is good. Even if you don't know, even if you don't know, I'm going to share this with you, and that is God's primary motivation in our lives is to make us, each and every one of us, the best person that we can possibly be. That's his primary motivation. You know, he, he, listen, if you're going to say that you say, you're going to say that you uh, are connected to the holy, then he, he wants to uh, motivate you to be the best you that you can be. Why is that? Because you are representing him. I am representing him. So he would prefer that we represent at the highest level possible. Now, let me share this with you. <laughs> don't you know the more that you represent the more the enemy comes at you because he wants you to shut your mouth yeah he wants you to be quiet 
He don't want everybody to know at the job that you say. He don't want you going around inviting people to worship. He don't want you uh, consoling people when they're having their issues. He don't want you to uh, uh, t talk to them about having faith in God. So therefore, the enemy don't want you on the highest level, living on the highest level. The enemy wants you to, he, he wants you to live on the highest level of temporary things that he gives. Even though sin starts off sexy, it always ends up sad. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Even though sin starts off sexy, you think about it. Think about any and every sin that you've ever committed in your life. It always starts off a great ideal. It always smelled good from the beginning. It always had a unique feel to it. It was sexy, but it always ended up sad and leaving us sad. Now, <laughs> whoo, so, okay, let's look, at, let's look at Satan's job description, John 10 and 10. John 10 and 10. Uh, John 10. This, I'm going to give you the amplified version. I'm going to give you the amplified version. In the Amplified Version, this is Satan's job description. Every, every day of our life, uh, every day until the end of the world, this is his job dis the description. It says, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Uh, so that's Satan's job description. And then the rest of you can read at, at home. It has nothing to do with Satan's job description, but... The first sentence is Satan's job description. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. In other words, he takes all he can and then kills what he can't have. That's, that's what he does. The enemy, the strong man, comes to take all he can. And then to kill what he can't have. Oh. Numbers, mm. 23rd chapter, 19th verse. King James Version, Numbers the 23rd, 19. Uh, King James Version puts it like this. He said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken? And shall he not make it good? Okay, let me give it a little bit, make it a little bit more clear. The same thing in the New Living Translation, Numbers 23 and 19. It said, God is not a man, so he does not lie. I like that. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. He has, he has ever spoken and fit. Okay, he has ever spoken and failed to act. So, I mean, if he said it, he going to do it. Then it says, he has ever promised and not carried it through. Meaning, if, if he's sure to, he promised to you, then it's not that he don't deliver. It's something that we did that caused him not to deliver. We got in the way of our own blessing. We got in the way of our own promise that he made to us. And I think I just shared just, just a couple weeks ago. When Pastor told me, Pastor said, the only thing that, that would come between uh, Faith City Christian Center getting that location up there is sin. He said, son, you got to stay focused. He said, because that's the only thing that can stop you from getting to the hill. So even in our own lives, in our own lives, the only thing that can stop us from getting to our blessing. Some of us had to sit back and watch our blessing with somebody else every day. That's powerful, ain't it? We had to watch, we had to watch somebody else that and got moved up in line and got our position, be it at work or what have you, every day. All because we didn't stay focused. That's something else. James 1 and, 1 and 17, New Living Translation, puts it like this. He said, Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God, our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. Now look at right here. It says, he never changes. 
He never changes. He never changes. He's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will not change. He never changes. The same God that dealt with that same strong man yesterday is the same God that can deal with that strong man today and will be able to deal with that same strong man on tomorrow. The same God that defeated that strong man on yesterday at somebody else's address can defeat that strong man at your address today and defeat that same strong man at somebody else's address tomorrow. Because don't you know that just because he get off of you don't mean that he quit? Ain't that just how the devil is? Just because he get off of you, just because you pray him off of you, he going to find somebody else to pray on. 